So now that the Indiana Fever have been knocked out of the playoffs, we need to have a little talk about the WNBA. See, the WNBA, they're going to see a huge drop off in their viewership for the rest of the playoffs. And why is that? Well, it's because Caitlin Clark's team, the Indiana Fever, have been eliminated from playoff contention. Or they've been eliminated from the playoffs. And um, the WNBA, they've missed a huge opportunity. In my view, I, I don't know if they I don't know if they they could even come back from this opportunity that's missed. See, you have to go back. Well, you have to go back to the 1980s. The NBA was struggling. In fact, the NBA Finals was broadcast on tape delay in the early 80s. That was until Magic and Bird came along. That, that kind of, that was the starter. That was the thing that, you know, got the NBA rolling. But what truly made the NBA what it is today, the global brand that it is today, was Michael Jordan, was MJ. He's the reason, at least in my opinion, that the NBA is what it is today. Fast forward now, 2024. This girl from Iowa named Caitlin Clark sets all sorts of records in college. Goes pro, gets drafted by the Indiana Fever, number one overall. In the NBA's revenues increase, attendance increases, viewership increases, Caitlin Clark is the reason why attendance and advertising grew for the WNBA in 2024. But how is she treated? Well, Indiana Fever make the playoffs for the first time in eight years. Caitlin Clark's not included on any of the promotional material. Why is that? Caitlin Clark has been abused by other players from other teams this season. The latest... being an eye poke by the Connecticut Suns by Johnny Carrington, which she was questioned about, which I'm surprised she was questioned about because the, the reporter for USA Today, Christine Brennan, who is as woke as they get at the USA Today, but I'm going to give her credit where credit is due. She asked the question, and the question is, did you intend to hit her in the eye? Now, the response was what I expected. The Johnny character said, I don't even know why I would intend to hit anybody in the eye. That doesn't make sense to me. I didn't know I hit her. I was trying to make a play on the ball, and I guess I followed through and hit her. When you're making a play on the ball, you don't follow through and scrape down like this. You go like this. Sorry, not buying it. Obviously, it's never intentional. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. That's not even the type of player I am. So that was the question Christine Brennan asked. Now, that has caused an uproar from Terry Carmichael Jackson, who just happens to be the WNBA Players Association Executive Director. She wants USA Today to discipline Brennan because she dared to ask the question. In fact, she said, USA Today Sports should explain why a reporter with clear bias and ulterior motives was assigned to cover the league. Really? That's not bias. That's not ulterior motives. That's seeing what happened in front of your eyes and saying, whoa, this isn't, this isn't cool. This isn't right. I need, I'm going to find out why. Let's go through this player's 
What's going through this player's head? What's going through her mind? Why did she do this? So, Miss, Miss uh, Jackson went on to say, that so-called interview in the name of journalism was a blatant attempt to bait a professional athlete in participating in a narrative that is false and designed to fuel racist, homophobic, and misogynistic vitriol on social media. This is a woke-on-woke -woke crime, if you ask me. I mean, Christine Brennan is now on the side that she probably never thought she'd be on because her beliefs align with the beliefs of those in the leadership of the WNBA. Ms. Jackson goes on to say, Instead of demonstrating the cornerstones of journalism ethics like integrity, objectivity, and a fundamental commitment to truth, you have chosen to be indecent and downright insincere. How? I mean, I get it. 70% of the league is black. 30% is LGBT. Okay. So what? It's not about identity. It's about the fact that Caitlin Clark has time and time again this season got the wrath of certain players because they don't like her, because she's popular. I mean, just look here. This is in Forbes, the ratings. Nationally televised WNBA games average 657,000 viewers, the highest audience in 24 seasons. Televised games with Caitlin Clark's Indiana Fever average 1.18 million viewers compared to 394,000 for all other games. So Caitlin Clark's games on TV draw nearly four times the viewership. We'll call it three times the viewership. There were a record 22 games that averaged over a million viewers, 19 of which involved the Indiana Fever. Previous high had been 1998 when 15 games averaged over 1 million viewers. The highlight of the season was the WNBA All-Star game in which the WNBA All-Stars defeated the U.S. Olympic team, blah, 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 blah. The game aired live on ABC six days prior to the opening ceremonies of the Olympics and averaged a record 3.44 million viewers. Last year's All-Star Game, 850,000 viewers. The most watched regular season game was between the Indiana Fever and Chicago Sky. Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese, former college rivals. That game averaged 2.35 million viewers. But according, but according to... 60 Minutes, CBS... The WNBA is the real breakthrough star, not, Clay, not Caitlin Clark. Yes, Caitlin Clark is the, the, the one responsible for the breakthrough season as far as attendance and advertising in 2024. And just one other example of the hatred the WNBA has for Caitlin Clark. Remember, they left her off the U.S. Women's Olympic basketball team because they said she wasn't good enough. She wasn't good enough. Well, surprisingly, I mean, they... They probably couldn't do anything about this. Let's see if this refreshes here. This leaked out yesterday. She was uh, named WNBA Rookie of the Year. They couldn't help but give it to her because she was so good. She broke all the rookie records in the league this year.
averaging 19.2 points, 8.4, 8.4 assists, 5.7 rebounds per game. Seventh in scoring, shooting 41.7%, 24% from three, 90.6% from the free throw line, led the league in assists, at a 1.3 steals, and nearly a block per game. How she finished fourth in the MVP voting? Well, I know how she finished fourth in the MVP voting. My opinion, she should have been league MVP this year, as well as rookie of the year. So, WNBA, hey, if, if you're watching, if you're listening, you have your MJ. You have an opportunity to break out. But you get, you, you're letting your identity politics, politics? politics get in the way. So I suggest you take a long, hard look at your attendance, your attendance for the 2024 season. Take a long, hard look at the advertising revenue for your 2024 season. And say, you know what? This is the woman we need to get behind. This is the woman that's going to take the league to new heights. You have an opportunity. It's not too late. This was a rookie year. So, what you do with it, or what you don't do with it, that's on you. So comment down below. Tell me what you guys think about this whole Caitlin Clark situation. I think she's got a chance to lead the NBA, the WNBA into the future to be an even bigger success than it was in 2024. That is if the angry bitches of the WWA, WNBA can check their egos and just play. So comment down below. While you're at it, please take the time to smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss a video. And with that, I will see you guys later.